You know what you're listening to? You're listening to the theme team bringing the light of Islam right into your hearts. Follow us on Facebook at the Dean Team Sydney radio program and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Dean Team Sydney. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Welcome my dear respected brothers and sisters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you all for tuning in to another Dean Team program. With me is my beautiful and uh, very loved brother, Abu Muhammad Mazin Abu Zulaf, Assalamu alaikum Mazin. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the one for whose sake you love me love you too, Mr. Oh, uh, come on, man. Well, look, the one that I love you for his sake is the one why we are here today. Allah We're Allah. here to speak about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the King of all kings, the greatest. And subhanAllah, yani just before just before we started, myself and Mazin were speaking about, okay, where do we start? <clears throat> and honestly, within a couple of minutes, we had so much material <laughs> we're thinking, you know... I think we need a series, Hablas, this know, is not enough, yeah. Well, I mean, look, we are speaking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And everything, everything comes back towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And where do you start? You know, speaking about His greatness, speaking about His mercy, speaking about His justice, speaking about all of these, you know, all of these, you know, infinite attributes, attributes of His that, that, are, that, are, that, are, that are just subhanAllah and... But, yani, you know, it's a little bit more than just speaking about Allah. We are speaking about our Creator. We are speaking about the one that every single one of us, we depend on Him to exist. You know, so... so. You know, reality, Hoblos, is if we were to just sit here and talk about just the attributes, we'll, we'll be here forever. You will never, ever do it justice. You know, you will never, ever do it justice. And, you know, so we were thinking that maybe, you know, just to get us started... I think the best thing is to maybe speak about the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because really this is what this is what singles out the Muslims from you know from all of the other religions is that you know the core of our deen is the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is the tawheed knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one worshiping the one Allah Allah who has no partners who has no yeah you know, there are there are no deities there there are no sub gods when all the there there is there no is partners, nothing nothing, nothing. There, there's no sons there's no daughters there's no mothers there's no fathers there's nothing of the like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one and not just the number one right but he's the ultimate one you know sometimes when you when you say that he's the number one well, number one can become two, and if you plus that with another, it can become three, it can become four, and the list goes on. But when you say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the ultimate one, then there is no second. That's right. There is no substitute. The one and only. Maybe one of the greatest suwar in the Quran, you know, is Kul huwa Allahu Ahad. Why? Because this 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 surah, this chapter speaks about the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. You know, it is said that some Jews came to the Prophet of Allah. Right, um, you know, I, th- I think I think it was some Jews or some Bedouins came to the Prophet, and they asked, "Tell us about the lineage of Allah Azza wa Jal." When I was a tell us about His lineage. Tell us about you know His fathers and His mothers. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He sends down Quran then and there at that moment. He didn't wait, and in fact, it's so special that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala even when Jibril says to Muhammad, "Qul." Yani say, even that was recorded in the Quran. You know, it's not like, you know, it's not like, okay, look, Muhammad Wasallam say to them that, no, it came down directly. That say Allah Azza wa Jal is the one. What one? That Allah is the ultimate one. Allah Samad. You know, that He's the infinite. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is, He is the ultimate one. You know, Lam Yalid wa Lam Yulad. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. And you know, why, why was this so important? Because at the time, and even, even until today, you know, this, this, this thing was huge, Mazin, amongst the, you know, yep. you know, uh, you know, the father God, the son God, the, yeah. no, no, Allah the subhanahu wa ta'ala. Trinity yeah, and you know, and, and, and so this, you know, this at the time was huge, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it clear. Your Lord is one, the ultimate one. He doesn't have children, nor is he a child of anyone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't have kids, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't have wives, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't have... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above all of this. So, you know, he says, Kul Allahu ahad, Allahu samad, lam yalid wa lam yulad, wa lam yakul lahu kufwan ahad. And there is nothing like unto Allah, nothing. 
if every single human being was to come together and we were to use our creativity, our imagination, you know, if we were to use every single aid possible to come together and try to, يعني, try to come up with an image of God or with a concept of God, we couldn't. Allah is above it all. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above any of this. And this is what makes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so unique and so special. This is, subhanAllah, this is something that we, as humans, I guess, we try and use our own logic to understand things. And um, reality is, you know, we understand, you know, talking about the attributes of Allah, we understand the attributes, you know, in, in, in the way that we understand them. For instance, you know, when we talk about mercy, humans are, are merciful as well, you right. know. But the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal is above and beyond. It's infinite and it's perfect, right? So it's at a level where we probably don't even comprehend it properly. You know, Allah Azza wa Jal's um, justice as well is perfect and infinite. And humans are just as well. Um, but there, there's a limitation to our justice. You know, there's, a, there's a different perspectives to our justice. But Allah Azza wa Jal is, is perfect in His justice. So we need to understand Allah Azza wa Jal. One of the ways we understand as well is through the descriptions that He has described Himself with. That He, both He and uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has described Allah Azza wa Jal with. And this is, you know, one of the ways we can get a good insight. But, you know, it's funny, you spoke before about, you know, Surah Al-Ikhlas, you know, Kul Hu Allahu Ahad. I remember watching that video with, about Yusuf Estes when he spent all that time trying to, um, you know, when he came to Islam. For those of you who don't know the story, I recommend you, you know, you find it on YouTube, um, how Yusuf Estes came to Islam. But, if, you know, long story short, there's a, an Egyptian person that um, he did some business with, and he was, a, I think, a Christian preacher. This Yusuf Estes was a Christian preacher. And he tried to prove the exist. You know, he had tried to prove the Trinity to this Egyptian man, and he obviously, you know, tried and failed miserably. And then, so then he goes to the Egyptian. All right, then you prove to me there's one God. You prove to me that you know that there's only one God. So he he read Surah Al Ikhlas to him, and he and he and then Yusuf Esses was just mesmerized, so perfectly summarized, and you know, really. The person knows the fitra tells them that this is the truth, that Allah Azza wa is one. He does not need anyone. He did not, was not conceived, nor did he conceive anyone. But it is through the mercy and the blessing of his creation that we are here, subhanAllah. SubhanAllah, you know, like even, you know, even, even when we compare Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, you know, how do I, how do I address this correctly, Mizin? Um, you know, if you can stay on top of it for me, Mizzen. You know, like, you know, so many times you'll come with dialogue with other faiths. And uh, sometimes we tend to get to this soft side where other people say, well, well, you know, really, what the heck? Look, at the end of the day, we're, we're all, all worshipping the same. The same yeah, yeah. That we are all, you know, that all of us worship the same God. Well, you know, although this sounds nice, it's actually not the case at all. And again, this is coming back to the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that our Allah is one, ultimate one, but not only that, our Allah, and, and this is an amazing thing, that why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala feel the need to, to make this clear to us in the Qur'an? Yani, and I'll give you guys an example, right? Um, in the first page of the Bible, right? Um, in fact, in the first verses of the Bible, um, you know, God speaks about the creation of the heavens and the earth. And he says that he created the heavens and the earth in six days, and we agree. Yep. But then says that he rested on the seventh. Yeah. Right? That God rested on the seventh. See, compare this to the Allah that's in the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La ta'khuduhu sinatu wa la nawm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in, you know, in the greatest verse in the Quran, we spoke about the greatest chapter, this is the greatest verse in the Quran. Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al hayyul qayyum. You know, Allah, there is no God except He, Al Hayyul Qayyum, the living, the eternal living. Why does Allah need to tell me He's living? You know, I'm living. So, what's so special about His living? No, because His living is dependent of anything and anyone, whereas our living is dependent on Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And He's completely independent. Right? So, He says, Allah, and then He says, La ta'khudahu sinatun wa la nawm. He says, No sleep, no slumber, no tiredness, no fatigue. Ever overcomes Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens and the earth in the six days, but this didn't take anything away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that whenever He declares a matter, whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants something, He says, Kun fayakun. He says, Be, and it is. And you know, the whole reason why I'm mentioning this is because I wanted to come to a story that was mentioned by Ibn Kathir 
in the translation of this, right? In the translation of let that no no sleep, no tiredness overcomes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you compare this to all the other faiths, right? So, you know, he says here, he says that uh, he says that some men came to Musa alayhi salatu wasalam and they asked him, Musa, does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does he sleep? Does Allah get tired? So two angels came to Musa that night and said to Musa that tonight you'll be made to stand all night and you have to hold these clay bottles of water or clay bottles of or whatever it was, right? And that uh, Musa, you have to hold them all night and that, and that you can't go to sleep. So these two angels, they, they came to Musa. It was an unannounced thing. You know, he had been working all day and obviously the, the night he, he, he was hoping on some rest. So, you know, he takes the orders, he holds these clay bottles of water, and he's standing up. First part of the night passes him by. He's getting extremely tired, extremely fatigued. His eyelids are getting heavy. And by the time the second half of the night comes, he falls asleep. He falls to, to the ground, and these clay bottles, they come smashing to the floor, and the water goes everywhere. So the angels returned and said to Musa, Ya Musa, if Allah Azza wa Jal was to sleep for a moment, the seven heavens would come crashing down onto the earth. Like these clay bottles smash the floor. And this is the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't get tired. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need to sleep. You know, some of us now, you know, if this talk was to go for more than necessary, you know, you start looking at your phone, you start looking around, right? Like you start to get fidgety. Why? Because our concentration, our attention span, forget attention and concentration, just fatigue. You physically couldn't stay up for more than yeah. what? 24 hours if you really push this off but then what but then you'd fall asleep Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is awake all the time you know so so again this is this is the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, he is complete subhanallah in 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 everything you know there's a hadith and I'll, I'll paraphrase it so I'll make sure I don't ruin it um uh, prophet sallallahu alaihi says uh, that you know we're the first we're the first of you and the last of you the jinn of you and the men of you were to were you to come to me um, asking for you know asking for anything that you wanted to ask for, and I were to give it to you, that it would not decrease from my kingdom or from it would not decrease from my kingdom whatsoever, you know. So that gives a bit of a context. We we all know, you know, we sort of have a feeling we that we understand Allah Azza wa Jalla, but that gives a context. Like if everyone from the beginning of time, the first and last, and the men and the jinn and all creation were to ask Allah Azza wa Jalla for anything, he would give and he would give it to them. And his kingdom will not, you know, what he is, his dominion will not decrease, not even a drop. You know, this this mezin really, if we were to sort of sort of just pause it there for a moment, because this is a sahih hadith. Mm. It's a hadith, right? Um, you know, this is a hadith could see, and Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that if every single creation of mine was to come from the very beginning to the end. And the amazing thing is, Mazen, that in the hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and everyone was to ask me for everything that they desired. So Allah's not going to limit it to say himself and say, well, look, this is what I think is appropriate for you. No, yeah. no, no, no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, listen, I'm going to leave it to you. Yeah. You come to me, every single human being come to me, and you tell me everything that you desire. You know, Mezin, I remember when I was a young boy. And you know those scrolls that you open up and they just keep on going for kilometers. <laughs> right, well, the last, things. you know, I, I, don't, I don't know if you remember, but um, I remember when I used to go to Arabic school and Quran school, I used to have the teacher there, you know, he used to try and tell us about Jannah. And, you know, we were young at the time. Yeah. So he used to tell us, you know, in Jannah you can have whatever you want. Yeah, lollies. Uh, <laughs> so we used to go, oh, I really like whatever we want. He goes, whatever you want. And we used to, because back then it was a Nintendo, right? <laughs> Can I have a Nintendo? He goes, yeah, you can have as many as you want. So we used to go, can we have 10? Like 10 Nintendo. <laughs> yeah. like, what are you going to do with 10 Nintendo? But anyway, right? So we used to go, oh, can we have 10 Nintendos? He'd be like, yeah, you can have 10 Nintendos. And we couldn't comprehend anything beyond that. That's it, 10 <laughs> Nintendos. Like, forget it. That is everything, right? But that's, that's as a young kid. But now that you've grown up, right? Maybe now some of us were a little bit more creative. No, 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 hang on. I want X amount of dollars, X amount of gold, X amount of silver, X amount of houses, palaces, whatever, cars, whatever it is. Allah says, if every one of you was to ask me for everything that they desired, I would give everyone what he asked for and more. And this doesn't take an ounce away from my kingdom. SubhanAllah. Everything belongs to Allah. Everything belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we all belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because in a very similar hadith, Mizin, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses us in the same manner. 
If the first of you to the last of you, the human of you and the jinn of you, if you all to come together and worship me and worship me and worship me till you come like the best heart amongst you, he says, this doesn't increase my greatness. Don't think for a moment that Allah is in need of our ibadah. <coughs> Sometimes we think that Allah SWT is in need of my worship. That, you know, if I don't pray, I did a baddie, right? And therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets upset because, you know, he's not great anymore when I overblend. No, 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 no. Allah doesn't need any one of us. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, all of our worship and all of our good deeds and all of our charity and all of our Quran collectively doesn't change the greatness of Allah. He's the king of all kings. You know, he's the first with no beginning. He's the last with no ending. It is Allah who the Prophet of Allah Azza wa Jal, he says, the Prophet of Allah says in the Sahih Hadith, he says, أَطَّتِ He says, verily the heavens have squeaked, and they have every right to squeak. What are they squeaking about, O Prophet of Allah? You know, he says, the heavens, the heavens are squeaking. You know, you, you, like, you know, sometimes when you put a lot of weight on a table, the timber starts to sort of give way and it starts making that, that, that sound and that squeak, yeah, you know, and, and that, that squeaking and that crackling. Yeah. The Prophet of Allah is saying that the heavens are making this sound. Why? He says there isn't room for four fingers. Illa wa malikun sajudun lillahi ta'ala. He says, except there is an angel. There's no room for four fingers. And he put his fingers forward and he said, there isn't room for four fingers except there is an angel in prostration to Allah. These angels are worshipping Allah 24 hours. They never disobey Him. So don't ever think, my brothers and sisters, that Allah is in need of our ibadah. You know, the, the, the funny thing is that, um, you know, Allah Azza wa Jal is the one that gives us everything we have and everything we desire. And yet He doesn't, again, as He said, He's not in need of, you know, giving this to us. In fact, we're the, we're the ones that should be, you know, begging him for these things. You know, the, all the blessings that he's given us, all the, um, you know, the all the faculties that we have. Even Allah Azza wa Jal Himself, He says, "Wala in ta'udu ni'mat Allahi la tahsuha." Yeah, if you were to count the blessings of Allah, you would never ever be able to count them. You know, and then people say, "Yeah, okay, but you know, I've got this, I've got that." No, I mean, you know, have you ever thought? Even Subhanallah, uh, Sheikh once pointed out, you know, in your mouth, under your tongue, you have a gland that produces saliva. If this gland wasn't there, or if it were to stop or something, you'd actually dry up. You know, you wouldn't have been able to swallow anymore. We don't have, I've never even thought of that. You know, I'm able to swallow because of this saliva. You know, if you breath, that you don't even think twice about that this breath is, you know, you're, you're breathing while you're not even thinking about it. If Allah Azza wa Jal decided that you're not going to breathe anymore, what are you going to do about it? You know, Allah Azza wa Jal says, if you were to count the blessings of Allah then you would never be able to count them. And it's so true. Even the blessings of the eye, you know, what would, we, what would we give for this blessing? And again, He gives us these blessings even though He doesn't need to give these to us. You know, and He doesn't even need us to thank Him. In fact, we are in need, you know, we should be thanking Him for allowing us to thank Him. And this is again also in, in, the, in the tasir of Ibn Kathir when Dawood alayhi salam, it was said that, Ya Allah, how can I ever truly thank you for my blessings? If me thanking you is a blessing in itself, how can I ever repay you? If me thanking you for thanking you for allowing me to thank you is a blessing in itself, do you know what I mean? It's a, it's an amazing concept, and we'll never ever repay Allah Azza wa Jal's debt. But what we can do as as slaves of Allah is worship Him the way that He's meant to be worshipped. Yeah. You know, look, um, you know, Allah Allah Subhanahu wa Taala loves to be recognized. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to be praised. And he deserves Allah to be so, yeah. Of course, because he is the one who is most deserving. But Mezin, you know, I just want to go back to what you were saying about, you know, just about the human body. Because Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is very, very interesting. Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he addresses the atheist, if you like, in the Quran. And he doesn't get too far into it. He's not mentioning the sun or the heavens. Or the... He says, don't they look at themselves? SubhanAllah. You know, so sometimes people ask, where is Allah? Show me Allah. How do I know the existence of Allah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that don't, you know, don't those men and women who think, don't those men and women who ponder, don't those men and women who claim to be, you know, thinkers and... and, and, and he the, says, you know, don't they look at themselves, uh, you know? If you think that you are an intellectual, just look at yourself. Look at your creation. Look at how, look at how you have come together. Look at the organs. 
Look at the human body. Mazin, you were, you were you were speaking about if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided that your lungs were to not breathe anymore. You know, this is maybe a bit extreme. Let's go a little bit lighter. You know your heart that is pumping, you know what, every second? Yeah. Right? Leaders you, upon leaders. Right? Your heart that is pumping and has been pumping since the day, not the day you were born, since you were in the womb of your mother. Oh. Right? This heart. Have you ever once in your life had to tell your heart what to do? Never. Imagine, imagine, Allah sp- look, your heart is working subconsciously, whether I know, I don't know, my heart is pumping and it's doing its job. By whose order? Who's telling the heart to do what it's doing? Taib, let's just say, let's just say for a moment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He took this blessing away from us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He took this na'ma away from us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided that we had to send the signal to the heart every single second to pump. How difficult would life become? Well, that's what we'd be doing. In fact, you actually couldn't do anything. No. In fact, if I gave you salams and you responded to my salam with concentration and you forgot your heart, then by the time it will take you to have had returned, you know, alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> Gone. Right? You'd be on the floor. Yet this is a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us so much, so much. Mezin, we are almost out of time and we've got so many things that we want we've to touch on. We've got a lot of stuff to say. I know you mentioned before, Habla about, for instance, justice. You know, the justice of Allah. You know, we, we've spoken about the mercy of Allah in previous sessions. Yeah. And again, we can't speak enough about the mercy of Allah. Um, but you know, there's, there's a concept about justice. You know, once I heard the hadith about, you know, on the day of judgment, subhanAllah, um, that the ev- everyone or every living thing will be given justice, right? So, and that includes as well in the example that was given, it includes the um, the horned or un- unhorned ram that was in a fight with the horned ram, no. right? It will be given justice for being in that fight with the handicap, right? This that, is an animal. The other ram had horns, this and this one didn't have any horns, right? We're talking about animals here. Yeah. And it will be given justice by Allah. And I started to think, but hang on, don't the animals turn to dust, right? Yeah. And so what's the point of actually giving the unhorned ram justice? What's the point of bringing them back? What's the point? Only to turn them back into dust Into again. dust. And then I asked the sheikh once, and he said, it's to show, it's for Allah to show his justice. Yes, there is no point in our own logic that, you know, you bring in back this animal, bring it to life, giving it its justice, and then turning it to dust again. But the point is, Allah Azza wa Jal promises his justice. Yeah, so subhanAllah, Mazin, you find yani, this, is, this is obviously the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Something else, speaking about the justice of Allah, um, something that I also came across a few years ago, was one of the mashaykh was once speaking, and he said something that I found extremely interesting. And, you know, I would like to share it, but, uh, you know, I sort of need the brothers and sisters to give me their hearts because you can sort of get lost in this, right? Um, the sheikh was saying that, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He rewards the person who dies on Iman. He rewards him with an eternity of Jannah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He punishes the person who dies on Kufr. He punishes him with an eternity of hellfire. So the Shaykh poses a question. And he says, if Allah is just and Allah claims to be just, then how could you punish a man who dies on Kufr? So let's say someone lives 50, 60 years, yep. and then he dies on Kufr. Right? So he's been worshipping for 50, 60 years. Okay, so 50, 60 years of kufr and disbelief in Allah, right? And dies on kufr. Why is this person, for 50, 60 years of kufr, why is he being punished with an eternity of punishment? And why is the man who worshipped Allah for 50, 60 years, why is he getting eternal happiness and pleasure and, 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 and you know everything that, that he wants in Jannah? I mean, look, if someone, you know, if somebody made kufr against you for 50, 60 years, then yeah, it, would make, yeah, it would make logical sense that, you know, punish him for 50, 60 years. Yeah, he punish him double. Yep. Right? Let's yep. punish this man double. But why are you punishing him for eternity? His years of kufr were only so, so small. Yep. And then, subhanAllah, when the, when, the, when the sheikh was saying this, this really did put doubt in my heart that, hang on, this does make sense. I mean, if Allah is so just, why are you, you know, why are you throwing the man into eternal hellfire? But then the sheikh says something extremely interesting. 
And brothers and sisters, you know, I really, yani, I really want your full, full attention here. He says, the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he punishes this man who dies on kufr for eternity, is because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took his life, Allah knew at that point that had this man lived for eternity, he was going to live on kufr. And hence he's punished for eternity. And the same reason that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes the life of a believer, when Allah takes his life, Allah takes his life at a point where had this person lived for eternity, he was going to live worshipping Allah all his life anyway. And therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards him with an eternity of Jannah. So this comes back to the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how just Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. This is how merciful He is. This is how giving He is. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for 50, 60 years, you die on Iman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to reward you within eternity. Because Allah knows that had you lived for had you lived for an eternity on earth, you were always going to live as a believer. You were always going to believe, right? And therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards you. So again, yani, it, really, really, yani, it really does sort of show and it does highlight just how great Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. SubhanAllah, Hablas. As humans, we have this tendency, you know, we mentioned it before, about trying to put things into perspective that we understand and into a logical framework that we understand to um, make sense of things, you know. So we're talking about the infinite greatness, the infinite mercy, the infinite justice and forgiveness of Allah um, and His greatness overall. And as humans, this is natural for us um, that we try and use our own logic to understand this. But, you know, is there a hadith or is there something from Prophet ﷺ himself that gives us some perspective, some insight in how we can actually measure this to make sense to us as humans? Yeah, well, I mean, look, just before I do get into that, there is a way where we, we can know where we stand before Allah. Because we can never really comprehend Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we can understand exactly where we are before him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you know, it's like a guy once, and this is a bit of a funny story, right? But this guy comes up to a Muslim one day and he says to him, look, uh, you know, tell me where God is, right? Tell me where God is. Or, you know, you know, um, you know, like he starts to sort of ask things about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, so this young boy, he says to him, look, I'm thinking of a number between one and ten, right? And then the young man goes to him, I don't, I don't know. He says, well, then just choose a number. He says, uh, the number eight. He says, okay, the number eight. He says, tell me, where did you get that number eight from? He says, well, I pulled it out of my brain. He says, all right, tell me what part of your brain. He says, I don't know. He says, tell me what, what part. Was it the left side? Was it the right? Was it the front? Was it the back? He says, well, I don't know. He says, you know, if you can't tell me where you pulled the number eight out of, how do you want me to tell you about the creator of the heavens and the earth? And your brain. And your brain. <laughs> SubhanAllah. Do you know what I mean? Like, like you know, th- this is something that we need to sort of put things in perspective. But, you know, look, we are sort of towards the end of the show. And I would like to end it with this beautiful hadith. The Prophet of Allah, he says to his companions, he says to them, you know, do you know the distance of the heavens and the earth? Do you know the distance between the heaven, the first heaven, and the earth? So the companions say, you know, Allahu wa Rasulu alam, that Allah and his Prophet know best. So the Prophet of Allah, he says to them, he says to them that the distance between the first heaven and the earth is a distance of 500 years. And in another narration, he says it's like a ring in a desert. And you know, my brothers and sisters, you know what the expression really means, eh? Like you can't measure it. If I threw a ring in a desert, you'll never find it. Hmm. So yeah. it's even a bigger version of needle in a haystack. Yeah, it re- yeah. really, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. Like, what you, a ring in a desert. How big is a desert and how big is a ring? It's like a 10 cent piece or yeah. it's like a coin. How, how are you going to... But that's the expression, you know, like, you can't measure it. He says the distance between the first heaven and the second, right? Sorry, he says, you know, he says between the earth and the first heaven is a distance of 500 years. And this isn't, you know, our years. He says, for, for a day with Allah is a thousand years of our living. One day. But how much is this 500 years of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's time? You, you, you know, only God knows. So he says, between the earth and the first heaven is a distance of 500 years. A ring in a desert. He says, the second to the, you know, he says, the first to the second is a ring in a desert. 
It says the third to the fourth, a ring in a desert. The fourth to the fifth is a ring in a desert. The fifth to the sixth is a ring in a desert. The sixth to the seventh is a ring in a desert. Where are we now? SubhanAllah. Where are we? You know, if you just jump in an airplane, right, and you're only a couple of miles up, and you look down, you can't even see human beings no. anymore. And you're not even in the first heavens, like you're, you're you know. You're 10 Ks off the ground. Right, so, so here we're going heaven into heaven into heaven, and it's like a ring in a desert and a ring in a desert. He says until the sixth to the seventh is a ring in a desert. He says, and then above the seventh heaven is an ocean, its depth of which is a distance of 500 years, ring in a desert. He says, then on that is the throne of Allah Azza wa Jal. He says, and the throne compared to the seven heavens is like a ring in a desert. So my brothers and sisters, where are we? In perspective, we're nothing. We are not like, uh, uh, really the human mind cannot comprehend. So subhanAllah, you know, this does bring us towards the end of the show. Hablas, there's just one thing I wanted to share. Sorry, if that's yeah. right with you. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Um, I remember reading a quote once. It's not, it's not from a Muslim, but I thought it was actually a, 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 a very nice quote. And it probably suits our understanding of Allah Azza wa Jal more than anything else. Um, it basically, he said, you know, anyone can tell you how many seeds are in an apple, but no one can tell you except, except God how many apples are in a seed. You know what I mean? So I just thought, you know, this gives us some glimpse, you know. Yes, we, we have our limitations, but nothing nothing comes close to the to perfection the and the infinite course. knowledge and greatness of Allah. SubhanAllah. Well, look, you know, brothers and sisters, this does bring us towards the end of our show. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you all for tuning in. And, you know, my brothers and sisters, you know, I really hope and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you know, just as just as you've listened to this, and we ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that you've benefited, I do ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that you become a da'i and that you become a caller to Allah, and that you share these talks with those whom you love, and that you share these talks with the other brothers and sisters that are around you, so that they too can also benefit, and then together we can all benefit, and together we can all get this great reward from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala reward you all for tuning in. Jazakum Allah khairan. Abu Muhammad Mezin, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for coming in. Exactly. It's well, been an absolute pleasure. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Follow us on Facebook at the Dean Team Sydney radio program and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Dean Team Sydney.